Z is my favorite series of all time. Always has been, ever since I was a kid. I think it was, honestly, the first anime that I was exposed to, even before Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. I just always remember Dragon Ball Z being really prevalent. So, of course, with the large amount of games of Dragon Ball Z, there is bound to be some that are really, really good and some that are not so good. So where does Dragon Ball Z The Fighters stand? Honestly? I think it's one of the best Dragon Ball Z games to be released up to this point. Now, I'm not super big on fighting games. I don't really have the patience for it. The ones that I've ever played the most have been Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 and the first Injustice game. I guess being an only child might have a part to do with that because it gets kind of boring just fighting a computer over and over again. But getting really good at fighting games does take a lot of patience that I have to be really invested in to spend money and time on it like that. But I think that's where Dragon Ball Z The Fighters stands out. Now the game at its core is a fighting game, but the controls are a little more simple than say Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. It's super, super easy to pick up, but it's very, very difficult to master. And there's a lot of fun to be had, both in single player and multiplayer as well. Now, the style of the game is more or less Marvel vs. Capcom, more, most particularly 2 and 3, because it has the, uh, the 3v3 system where you control one character at a time, but you can switch between characters in the middle of the fight and also summon other characters to do more damage and to assist in special attacks. Now, graphically, the game looks pretty awesome. It's got that, like, anime cel-shaded kind of look to it, and the 3D models of the characters look awesome, and the game is really, really flashy. And I think that's really important for a fighting game like this that really appeals to a niche market. It has to look good, and Dragon Ball Z The Fighters does. Now, one thing that did kind of uh, interest me was the story mode. Typically, fighting games have kind of a convoluted story. And I'm not going to lie, the one for Dragon Ball Z The Fighters is a little bit silly, but it's campy enough that it's really enjoyable. The plot is that Android 21, a secret Red Ribbon Army agent, has released this thing that has engulfed the world in these like mystic waves that, D that lower everyone's power. And so the only way that people can fight is with a Link, which is the player character. And I thought that was an interesting bit that they did. So let's compare this to Budokai 3. So with Budokai 3, you could take an incredibly powerful character like Omega Shenron and put him against Krillin. And you were supposed to believe that just because they were in the same sense that they would be of equal power. Which, in the context of the show, isn't necessarily true. But Fighters does a really good job at explaining this. So because we as the player are the linked spirit, everyone's power and strength has been brought down to the same level. So that's how you could have weaker characters like Tien and Yamcha go up against characters like Super Saiyan God Goku and Beerus, the God of Destruction. It was a, it's the little touches in Dragon Ball Z Fighters that makes it really, really enjoyable. Now, the rest of the story, involving around Android 21, is an interesting one. She The character is... Very strange. She's like a mix between Majin Buu and Cell, in a way. Where, but, like, instead of just, like, wanting a strong opponent, she wants to eat them. And I don't know, man. It gets kind of freaky. Because you're fighting this pink chick, and she's just like, I'm going to turn you into candy and eat you. And it's just like... Mm. There's many points within the main story where I was just curled up in a ball in my... In my, safe, in my safe zone, just because I was like, mm, I'm very uncomfortable at this point. But I do have to say, she is a pretty good villain, especially for a villain that's exclusively in a Dragon Ball game. Sometimes when we have these exclusive characters like Hachiok, for example, sometimes they don't always do a good job. But Android 21 is a new character, very interesting, and pretty crazy. And the final fights with her are difficult, to say the least. Reflecting her strength and, you know, the comparative strength of the other characters. I was very impressed with that. Now, two things that I, that, that I think could have used a 
bit more improvement with Dragon Ball Z Fighters was the way the story mode was played out and the roster of characters. So, the roster of characters is considerably small. Budokai 3 had a much larger roster of characters, and they all felt somewhat different. In Dragon Ball Z Fighters, all the characters do feel different, and the way they fight, you know, is very interesting. But I think some more characters would have been needed. There's the core ones, you know, we have most of the Z Fighters, Teen Gohan, Adult Gohan, three forms of Goku, two forms of Vegeta, then, we, then a couple of Dragon Ball Super characters, which are super fun to play as. All the Super Saiyan God characters, Goku, Rose, and Hit, are super fun to play as. But that's beside the point. The roster is relatively small, and while that's not necessarily a bad thing, they could, they could patch in more characters later, I do think for initial release that's a, a little bit underwhelming, but there's other parts of the game that make up for this. Now the story, on the other hand, while watching it, watching the cutscenes and going through the motions is cool, the actual story campaign is kind of repetitive. It gets boring very quickly. One, due to the low number of characters, you fight the same clones over and over and over again. And I also noticed a big issue with difficulty. Now difficulty in itself, I feel, should be gradual. A game I don't feel should throw you in to this miasma automatically, unless it's Dark Souls. And Dragon Ball Z Fighters does quite the opposite. It starts off very, very easy. Like, the computer enemies that you fight early on in the campaign don't even fight you back. They just kind of stand there and take the damage, which is good for practicing combos, but there's no real challenge to understand, like, maneuverability, your dodging, etc. And throughout most of the campaign, it's that level of like really, really easy until the very end when you fight Android 21 and her difficulty spike is like, Ooh. like she will destroy all your characters in like seconds if, you, if, you, if you're if you not paying attention. And I feel that the game should have had a little bit more of a gradual slope rather than a flat line of easy and then holy balls is this game hard. Yeah, I guess you could say that the shift like that is it could be representative of the multiplayer I guess but I feel like in a fighting game the curve should be a little more sloped than just like 0 to 100 very quickly but despite those two things the game is beautiful it's really fun it's got a lot of really fun banter between characters like everyone roasts each other and it's awesome so like, there's this one part where uh, Piccolo is with Yamcha, and Yamcha's like really scared to fight people, and Piccolo is calling him a coward, and he's like, I see why Bulma chose Vegeta over you. And it's just like, oh my god! It's little things like that that make Dragon Ball Z Fighters worth it. Do I think it's worth the full price? Yeah, I say so. Dis despite everything... It's a solid Dragon Ball Z game. And one of the best that I've seen, not just for its visuals, but for its gameplay, which is top notch. If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, definitely get Dragon Ball Z Fighters. All right, everybody, this has been another episode of Kirk Talk. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.